Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, and thank you to all of our panelists. Uh, I represent a very fire prone and very rural section of the Western United States. And so the uh, prevention of these wildfires is of critical importance to the people that I represent. And I know a lot of the people in this room uh, share that concern. Uh, I uh, One of the things that I was struck by in the testimony from all four of our witnesses is the inadequacy of the uh, current satellite data that we're getting. Uh, both in terms of geospatial resolution and in terms of temporal resolution. And, and frankly, I had no idea that it was still this bad that, to be talking about uh, geospatial resolution of a, of a kilometer and temporal re resolution of only one or two frames per day uh, is, is clearly not going to be adequate to generate the kind of uh, wildfire models that we need to predict wildfire behavior and certainly is not going to be uh, as useful as it could be to uh, to be able to uh, give early warning when new wildfires start. So uh, that's what I'd like to ask some questions about. And uh, I, I probably could pick any of the panelists, but uh, Dr. McCarty, uh, I was struck by your testimony about this. I, can you talk a little bit about what the prospects are for improved uh, satellite imaging, uh, if we have anything in the pipeline? And in particular, maybe talk about the fact that I, I know that you know we're talking about geo space, um, uh, uh, we're talking about geostationary satellites mostly here, but you know the state of the art in satellites now is low Earth orbit satellites, which might solve your your uh, spatial resolution problems. Also, is there some prospect that we could use some of the assets that we have to solve this problem? Yes, and I thank you, Congressman, for that question. I, I do think that we have a lot of work going on uh, at NASA, at NOAA. I know uh, NIST even had um, a small workshop about around this. Um, a few years ago, um, of data fusion, of thinking about how to, um, uh, inter, you know, intercorporate um, various polar orbiting satellites, including low Earth orbit, and some of our commercial um, platforms, um, as well as our open source um, geostationary, uh, to provide better um, temporal resolution. Uh, it's more complicated with spatial resolution be because um, you just kind of have to accept the data as it is, how it was engineered. If it was engineered at 10 at 10 kilometers, it's 10 kilometers. And you just have to take that location and then try to compare it to something that's 10 meters in resolution. We've also had um, in the last 10 years and, and you know much credit to NASA, USGS, and NOAA for uh, their collaboration with the European Space Agency, um, with the Indian Space Agency, with the Japanese Space Agency, and trying to um, improve some of our other collaborations so that we have open source access to their platforms and are developing uh, you know, kind of a cross-pollination and coordination. And to be fair, sometimes our satellite systems are developed because they are meeting the needs of the community and not just the fire community. Often they need to meet the agriculture and food security. They need to meet uh, biodiversity and forest management. Um, they need to think about water quality um, as well as the atmospheres and the lith lithosphere as well. And so sometimes what we need for fire will get maybe pushed uh, to the end or, or um, at least the resolution will be downgraded a bit um, bec because there are these other components that also need to be captured in the same platform. Um, and so I do think that NOAA's uh, GOXO, which is in collaboration with NASA, is one way to move forward. They did hold a, a workshop last summer with local, state, and federal level fire researchers and practitioners and management to get their input on that. But, but even that system, which was um, a con an RFP was issued and two um, contractors were selected earlier this spring, its highest resolution will be half a kilometer. Um, and so really we need to think about um, you know, setting an agenda where the, we want spatial resolution that is helpful both tactically and strategically um, for, for fire management. And if I, I will return um, to you for, if you have further questions. Well, uh, thank you. I completely agree. It, uh, I'm, I'm horrified that we don't have access to higher resolution data than that. And as a scientist myself, I can tell you, there, there's uh, there's no way you can uh, you can uh, create meaningful prediction models based on that. And as you say, it would be very. Uh, we, we've got all of these high speed aerial assets now for fighting the fires. It'd be very helpful to be able to have real time information about when the fires start and where. So uh, I'm hopeful that we in Congress can help you. 
uh, to, to solve this problem and get access to this uh, higher resolution data, because then we can, as you say, text them, take the next step, work with the National Science Foundation and uh, catalyze more research into this topic. But uh, I see my time's expired. Uh, I want to thank you uh, to all of our panelists and I uh, yield back, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Dr.